standing here, it's quite an important place in Preston for a lot of women and we're outside Edith Rigby's house and we were just wondering if you'd heard of Edith Rigby or if that was the name that rang any bells? It doesn't actually, I've got to be honest, no. Have you heard of Edith Rigby? Is that a name that rings any bells to you? No, 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 no. Yeah, she was one of the early suffragettes, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, think yeah. I think she painted Lord Derby's. Well, she was statue, accused, of accused of throwing tar over it. <laughs> and she used to ride a bike everywhere. <laughs> so we were just wondering, have you heard of Edith Rigby? Is, is that a name that rings no. bells? Is she part of the suffragettes? She... I have watched the movie though. <laughs> so, have you heard of Edith Rigby? Is that a name that no. you know? I um, walked past there the other day actually and we did read that plaque. Fantastic. And what did you think? Did you know that she No, no, I didn't know. Could you tell us a little what you know about Edith? Just that she was a suffragette and she lived in Preston. That's about all I know, I'm afraid. It's a brilliant, it's <laughs> And we're here to talk about uh, Preston's very own unsung suffragette, uh, Edith Rigby. Uh, her blue plaque is here um, because Edith lived here on Monkey Square. Um, sadly, the plaque isn't correct. Um, her, she actually died in 1950, um, but apparently that is going to be changed. Um, as a local theatre company, we wanted to pay tribute to Edith because there's very little really known about her story. So we've written a brand new play called Woman on Fire to celebrate Edith and the suffrage cause uh, in general. So uh, Edith was born in Pole Street in Preston, which was quite a, a rough area at the time. And although she was the second uh, child of seven uh, to her father, who was a doctor, from a very early age, she had a, a very strong moral compass and was aware of her surroundings. She actually went missing one Christmas morning and uh, was giving away things that she'd saved to people who were uh, passing on the street that were less fortunate than herself, things like candied fruits and soaps. She campaigned to get better uh, conditions in factories. Um, she was aware of, of young girls not having access to ed education uh, or to any kind of leisure. So she actually set up Brook Street School for Girls, uh, recognising that young girls needed somewhere to go outside of work um, because they didn't have access to education. So she would take them on trips, they would have tea in uh, rich ladies' gardens because the wonderful thing about Edith is that she had a fantastic talent of persuading people to her way of thinking. Um, when she moved to Winkley Square, she was looked down upon by her neighbours uh, because she was seen to one day scrubbing her own front doorstep, which was meant to be beneath a woman of her status. Uh, but of course, Edith jettisoned those kinds of notions uh, on a daily basis. She was met with derision um, and she was ridiculed. As a teenage girl, she was the first woman in Preston to ride a bicycle. And she did that in bloomers and was uh, pelted with rotten vegetables and called a harlot. And um, But she didn't care. She just thought this is fantastic. And of course, the bicycle is a brilliant symbol for many women, uh, especially working class women, who didn't have access to go to uh, meetings to do with re uh, women's votes. So the bicycle itself is a wonderful symbol of, of, of freedom for women to actually get to meetings, to be able to combine and make plans to protest, for, for us to be recognized as equal human beings. Uh, there are so many things about Edith um, and we've covered them uh, in our play and I, I really do hope that we can stage it here in Preston, her own hometown and our hometown. Um, to recognise what she did and her, her achievements, but also to light a fire in everybody, to, to realise that yes, we've come a long way, but there's still an awful lot that we can do. And to get people to think about how we can change the world that we live in and, and make it a better place for us all. I hope that uh, today and in the future, we can all recognise the sacrifices that women such as Edith Rigby have made for us. Uh, these women, uh, gave up their privileges, um, they were derised uh, by neighbours and the public. When they were on protest they were also brutally uh, assaulted, uh, physically but also sexually. Um, they were grabbed around their private parts, um, a very degrading thing to happen to, to anybody at any stage of their lives. Um, women were killed on some of these protests. 
uh, but also when they were jailed, uh, many of them went on hunger strike and were force fed. This practice is just inhumane, um, forcing tubes into uh, women's mouths and noses and to be in that kind of situation and then to be released on what was called the Cat and Mouse Act where women were then given the chance to recuperate uh, enough to be brought back into prison to then go through the same kinds of treatments. These uh, sacrifices, these punishments that women uh, experienced mustn't be forgotten. Uh, we've still got people that are not free to, to speak out about injustices in the world and we must make sure our voices are heard. We must do what it takes to be heard. Um, lots and lots of working class women did not get the vote today, a hundred years ago. Uh, they had to wait another 10 long years. But today is the beginning of a, of, of a change for women um, and, and that must be recognised and the sacrifice that our foremothers made for us um, must never be forgotten. They, they did this to give us the right to vote, uh, not to make us feel guilty that we should vote, but we ought to get up at least to walk to a polling booth and put a cross in a square when when we think about the kinds of things that women did on a daily basis. Um, we must remember Edith and, and all the other women uh, of, of all classes uh, that, that struggle to give women the vote.